for for people coming into this, I do think one of the biggest things to consider, and not only for your relationships around you, but for your own self, um, it, it's so important to find a balance. And it's the hardest thing to do, but you have to uh, disconnect. You have to find ways to force yourself to disconnect. I did, I did a, this is not a suggestion, uh, but maybe an example. <laughs> when COVID hit, I bought a boat. Now, don't go buy a boat. I'm not saying go buy a boat. <laughs> Get a motorhome. Welcome back to the show. There's no telling where we'll go. So come and share a laugh on the Imp and Skiz podcast. We are back on the couch. We like, I actually, like, you realize these podcasts were actually started that way. We're back on the couch. Everybody knows what this is all yeah. about. Chances are they've seen the thumbnail, but I don't care. I am super excited. We're not excited. changing things. No, we're doing the same way. Yeah. Impulse, who do we have with us today? Uh, we've got the one, the only, the fantastic Mr. B00 in the house. B -double. What's up, buddy? Hey, baby. Look at this guy. What hey. is up, man? It is so good to have you on. Like, you, you probably one of the most requested guests that we've had. Really? Yeah. 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 <laughs> so it's fantastic wow. to have you join us. We're going to do the thing that we always do with guests, though, is, is we try not to just assume all of our podcast viewers and listeners know exactly who you are, even though they, they should. Uh, but yeah. you're going to have to start off with a little bit of introduction, if you would. Tell us about who you are and, and what you do on the tubes of you. You know what? I went through my head thinking, like, what kind of questions might they ask? And I was, I was thinking, okay, you know, maybe I would answer this way or that way. This is, the, this is maybe the hardest question to answer. <laughs> oh, dang. I am... I am uh, B00100, uh -huh. um, YouTube channel, making Minecraft videos, and uh, what else? What? Like, <laughs> That's it? You what, do you have to brag? Yeah, I yeah, have yeah. One no. million subscribers. Yeah, yeah. Let's do that. No, dude, and on. I got them easy. One, <laughs> you, look at him. Look at him already downplaying his success. 1.88 million. Thank you very much. Yeah. Yeah. You're 1. doing 8, great. Yeah. You're getting to two. Yeah. You're getting to two. You're doing. You're doing great. Um, but right. yeah, I mean, you, you you obviously are known for your your Minecraft videos. But I took a peek at your channel. You didn't always just do. Minecraft. You had some other stuff on there as well. I did do other stuff. Yeah, I did. I um, I I played one of the first like non Minecraft games I played was uh Sim City. Nice. Sim City. Okay. Maybe two thousand. Um, or I don't know what it was called, but it was it was like the last Sim City that came out years and years ago, and that did that did well. There and then are. I I did Cube World, and that did well as well. And then, uh, you know, Minecraft's. Remember, remember the time that we went through where all this. It was like the black dark days of Minecraft, where there were <laughs> no updates and everything yeah. kind of like yeah. dying off. So I started playing other random games, and uh, I hated that. <laughs> you hated that. Oh, uh, we're gonna get back to something though. I I know that that now looking back, you 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 didn't. Uh, you don't speak highly of that period, even though it was one of my favorite times of your career i think really you know... i loved it okay i, I okay. mean i loved it <laughs> okay yeah well, we're gonna tease that one uh just okay. a little bit we're gonna or also we're gonna continue with the cookie coder questions because b00 uh yes. it's your username that's your your youtube channel name is there a history behind how you got that name yes okay something <laughs> something you're willing to share or is it too personal it's private private oh okay no 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 <laughs> okay no uh, I mean, what? <laughs> it's it's a, it's uh you know the Kardashians are out there. We know their names: Kim Kardashian, uh -huh. Khloe Kardashian, all of them. We know their names. Uh, so aren't we allowed? Why are we so scared to share our names? We are for some reason. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's a reference to my family's last T name. name. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Fair enough. And, and, and the one hundred. 100 <laughs> you got a smirk on your face because it's it's putting numbers in your name is kind of like that's not elite level when you got one uh, numbers in your name or initials or, or initials <laughs> sure sure yep yep so impulse we were both kind of late to the game I guess weren't so. we? 
I guess yeah, so. Yeah, to get get the names you I wanted. I just assumed but yeah. there was 99 other B double O's. And so there had, had to, to have been the next the next number yeah. up. Yeah, <laughs> that could be it. I I don't remember what exactly it was. I think I was making uh, my Minecraft account first, or maybe I made the YouTube channel. One or the other, the just straight B double O was taken, and so mm. I just threw a hundred on it. At the time, it was early. I had a partner manager, and he said I can that the person's not using the name anymore b double o so we can give you the you know slash c mm -hmm. b double o thing so i got them both oh nice i didn't i got I didn't both that. okay but i still rock the 100 yeah so mm. 12 years i think yeah. since you posted yeah. your first building with b double o that's how it started mm -hmm. for you do you have any recollection of that video at all uh the one thing i remember about my first episode i did probably uh Six or seven, that's what she said jokes. <laughs> um, that's how you start off your YouTube career yeah, properly, that's man. That's right. Yeah, yeah. It w I mean, The Office was very popular at the time, so it was just constantly running in my mind. I thought, well, I want to be funny, and Steve Carell's funny, so let's, let's, that's a good one. There you go. Oh, God, I love it. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, isn't that funny how when when you get started on YouTube, you're you're like kind of searching for your voice, yep. you know? Yes. And so like you were channeling some Steve Carell. Uh, yep. I'll tell you this. I started YouTube after you and mm -hmm. probably mainly because of you. I was watching your videos. Really? You were my favorite YouTuber at the time. And uh, I watched so many of your videos that when I hit record, I found myself uh, mimicking your delivery. And I'd be in the middle I'm of the so recording sorry. like, I don't sound like myself. I sound like I'm imitating B-dubs. I should probably dial no that way. back. <laughs> yeah. So, oh, wow. so I had some clips. I don't know if I don't know if I got, if they got published or if I like looked at it and was like, I can't publish that. It's not even me anymore, you know? Really? Uh, but I was doing the same thing, just trying to find my voice getting getting started. So and, and my voice was apparently your voice. So that's so funny. I mean, what we we end up being some kind of amalgamation of the the people we watch and that inspire us mm -hmm. you know uh so i think that that happens to everybody oh, yeah. as you slowly find your voice it's i mean true. i have no idea what sort of weird monster i've my voice has turned into well that's sort <laughs> but, of what i was uh, going to ask you because i i think that there's a lot of truth in what you're saying and we actually discussed this in a previous podcast that a lot of my inflection and cadence and all that is is modeled after matthew perry and and I just, oh. something about his delivery and his timing is something I've always admired. And I end up doing it without even thinking about it. But when I yeah. think about uh, B-Dub's delivery, it is so fantastically unique that I can't even, I could not, gun to my head, I wouldn't be able to identify any potential um, entertainers out there that inspired you. Do you have any that you sort of leaned into? Uh, over the years, it's it's changed a bit. Um, I grew up, I grew up on the old Looney Tunes. Okay. So like my dad, he, it was like, he always had, had us watching those. Um, and he, and there's a lot of other old, old movies that my dad had, had us watch like old Pink Panthers and Jerry Lewis and stuff. These are just old, old comedians. You, you guys do not know these guys, do you? Jerry, of course I oh, know yeah. Jerry Lewis. Oh, yeah. You know Jerry Lewis. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Thank goodness. Here's yeah. the weird Everybody out, out there doesn't know him. See, this is why yeah. we, we <laughs> could have great conversations because uh, we're actually older than you. Yeah, we're, we're. You're older than me, of course. Yeah. What am I talking yeah. about? Yeah, I'm one year older than you, and I think you're just two or three year, years older than him. So, yeah. like, we're all and, of the same era. Yeah. <laughs> and all in our. 30s yeah too. yeah exactly <laughs> no, yeah just turned well i 30. just turned 30 yeah. you're like 27 if i'm not mistaken right yeah. of course yeah, of course, right. of course. Yeah. yeah no yeah but um i think over the years as i've become more comfortable i'm finding like when you know when you kind of when moments arise and you have your character that kind of comes out especially in like the life series or something like that very daffy duck uh yosemite sam hmm. like uh yeah the over the top screaming and yelling and you know 
I can, uh, yeah, I can see that yeah. now. Yeah, yeah, because I it it might I might I think B Dubs might have the best what in the world <laughs> when he does his what like it's like so <laughs> animated and I just like every time he does it it's actually one of the best ones ever was he had like this back and forth with Jem he's like I consider us friends but I don't think you feel the same she's like she's like I don't what do you want and he's like what like he is <laughs> yeah. so it was very cartoony so yeah. I I can see that now <laughs> wow that that fits that tracks. Yeah. My my latest one that I've been enjoying, and I got this one directly from Daffy Duck, is um, <laughs> you <laughs> just saying you. <laughs> yep. Like it's a, it's a very angry like I hate you you. Yeah. It's and, very uh, guttural. Yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. That's something I've always enjoyed about what what you do, and and because sometimes you do, and I I do think that you are in those moments trying to be funny. But I mm-hmm. think there's times where you're so naturally funny that you I that you probably didn't anticipate the reaction you were gonna get, and one of mm-hmm. them I gotta tell you. So B Dubs, you and I had this moment uh, in this last life series where I was like, "This, see this right here. This is why people think that this show is scripted <laughs> because we had this mm. this moment of understanding that we had no. no I was having a discussion uh, with 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 um, with Klebert, right? With with Cleo. I was mm. having a discussion with Cleo. I was, my task was, I was supposed to be the angel on her shoulder and to get her to do nice things or whatever. I went to do my mm-hmm. first thing. B-Dubs just happens to be riding by on a horse. That's it. And he pops mm-hmm. off his horse. I said, look at B-Dubs. Why don't you take a, take a diamond out? I want you to give it to him. And B-Dubs is like, I'll take it. I'll take it right now. And like he was just <laughs> right in there. She throws it to him. He ducks his head down and stares at it. And I said, now Cleo, watch, watch his head. Watch how this goes right right up. Right here. He <laughs> actually paused to now let me finish my line me. and then brings yeah. his head up. And in the, in the <laughs> music, the, it was a good moment and everything. However, in that moment, because the dance between Skiz and B-dubs that was, in my opinion, so well executed, I was like, this is why people think the show is scripted. They're like, yeah. how do you plan <laughs> that? You know, it was just, and, right. and then yeah. Tango stole your horse. And uh, you, yeah. you had this like moment of pause, and after like t- ten seconds, dude, you're Take like, I'm gonna man. rip Take your face, face off, off my horse. <laughs> like it was just <laughs> so guttural, and I'm like, yeah, this is I, I have a, there's a lot of pleasure working with you. Man. It's too much. Fun. It, was, it was great. Yeah, <laughs> that's something that I loved, especially about this last time. I, I love the, with what we do, um, I love no matter how much planning we do we can plan 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 and we can get good moments out of those but the very best moments to me come from unplanned scenarios Agreed. you know where it's it's us and we're we're interacting and we just going with whatever comes at us you uh, know absolutely absolutely agree to the point to where i would argue planning has the potential to constrict yeah. um, it, your yeah. your potential, right? Because now yes. there's these guidelines. You wrote these guidelines for yourself that you have to stay inside. And and, and yep. next thing you know, you're like restricted. You're like, why did I restrict myself like this? So yeah. I agree with you. And 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 just for the record, uh, the 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 proximity chat, which is a feature in Minecraft that you can use for uh, audio, and whether it's that or Discord, there's a very noticeable delay. So when any sort of um, Mm. The cadence can be matched it's that much more impressive because we're almost mm. anticipating that delay yeah it's just a slight true slight bit that we got to worry about yeah know? but uh yeah man so you you obviously have found your voice you know we were talking about your first episode and i i did i had i had to you know do a little research when we have <laughs> guests on and i had to guy to poke through and just see what your first video was like and 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 you can see you know I, as we all have experienced our, from our first episode to what we do now <laughs> There's always a, a transition, a transformation that happens. But uh, yeah. it got me thinking, like, as I was watching your first episode, uh, I was just like, how did this, how did he start this? Like, why Why did you decide to hit record that day? What What led you to even want to upload Minecraft footage to YouTube? Yeah, I, um, I, first, the first Minecraft video I saw was probably Scene Anners. Um, who was primarily like a Call of Duty guy. Um, and so I, w- I would watch him play every once in a while. And I saw I saw him play it, and the kind of infinite possibilities of the game really intrigued me. And it might have even been, been my brother that introduced me to it, my younger brother, who's also, he's a YouTuber as well. But um, then I started watching CoStar. I don't know if you guys remember mm-hmm. CoStar. He did Co's Quest. 
and and that's when I kind of got fascinated by the game because he would do he would take things a little further and it was almost tutorial based. Like I remember him, maybe doors just came to the game, but he's showing like how a door can be crafted and stuff. And uh, that that infinite possibilities thing was extremely attractive to me. And then you know the narcissistic thought come came into my head that hey I could probably do this. <laughs> Yeah. And, uh, you know, and it looked fun. It looked fun being able to create something and share it with people, you know. And uh, so that that was very appealing to me, but also scary. And I think that's why in everybody's first video, you're just like, oh, man, you don't know. You don't <laughs> know if you're going to do a good job or a yeah. bad job, but you got to at least try. Right. And um, so, yeah, I, I I did it and it was you know, just monotone and the worst <laughs> Minecraft you'll ever see in your life. But uh, challenge accepted. <laughs> yeah, but I just I, I mainly thought like I I it was something I enjoyed watching. It was almost like this is a hobby that I think I could get into, and um, so yeah, I, I thought I'd give it a shot and and definitely enjoyed it, even with you know no views, zero views for a long, long time. A month, maybe no views. Oh wow! Yeah, and um, but yeah, after a while, you know, you start to get one or two or three, and then and then, uh, yeah, the rest is kind of history, I guess. From there, you uh, but you did have some confidence during that recording because you promised the audience that if they stuck <laughs> with you, that you would become an amazing builder in Minecraft. You literally I said say that? those words in your first ever That's episode. A, that is aw what so a like flex. The, the foreshadowing you had there. You know what I mean. First of all, I thought that's one heck of a hook. You that know what I mean. Exactly. <laughs> this is my first episode ever. You wait. I'm going to become one of the best builders in the game, which you have. Oh, that's which you have. Like you are known to be an amazing builder in Minecraft. You've done like such groundbreaking work with your texturing skills and um, using different perspectives right to see yeah. things differently and and uh, yeah. really uh what is it forced focus uh, what do they call that i'm sure they got a term for it but forced perspective you you, you do things yeah. like that to, that just not a lot of people think of you have this kind of like natural uh ability to see things and make them happen in game is that something you've had since you were a child or, or where did where did these skills come from the that's very kind of you to say. And let me let me just interrupt and, and say that this whole thing is very difficult for me. As I was I was as I was uh I, I mentioned this in the life series, I, I do well with um self deprecation. So so paying the compliments and stuff, I, I, I get a little squirmy. So so it's very nice of you to say that. Um not my comfort zone because <laughs> I don't. I don't think of myself trying to make that way today. Is all yeah. Well, yeah. after this, we want to talk about how good looking you are. But go ahead. Yeah. Oh yeah. Well, that. Come on. I will take my shirt off right here. <laughs> no, no. Um, the uh, I grew up with a big bin of Legos, and I loved playing with them. Um, I you know at that time, obviously in, in 2011, 2012, I didn't even know what a good builder looked like. You know, I, in my head, I was like, well, I'm also a general contractor, so I I work on houses. I know how houses work and stuff, um, and so I can translate that to Minecraft and make you know semi realistic looking houses. Um, I had no idea what the community of builders would turn this game into that would turn it into an art platform. Um, but I, I knew that there was a drive inside of me because I, it's what I did as a kid. I love playing with Legos. Like it was hours and hours and hours, you know, just screwing around. And I don't know if I ever made anything interesting or cool as a kid. Um, but I knew that I loved it. I knew I was passionate about it. And you know, with anything in life, if you're driven in that area, it pushes you to work hard enough to become great at it. So um, maybe a little bit of confidence in that area, just knowing that this is something I love and I probably won't dry out, you know, and uh, I'll be able to do it long enough. It might take 50 years, but at some point I'll, I'll probably be good, you know. Um, Interesting. It did take longer than I've expected, but 
<laughs> no, I see. And I, I, I think you're an incredible builder and this is in the building, something I've always kind of struggled with. In fact, one of the first things that impulse and I made that I was, I don't know, arguably proud of, if you will, was the, the world market, which it was a giant mall. That was the shape of a circle. I was like, we made a circle <laughs> we in Minecraft. Circle. We're, We're the best it. ever. Ooh, yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yes. And I thought that that was groundbreaking. And then I started to see some real stuff. I'm like, Oh boy. And mm -hmm. I realized yeah. what I was seeing was, the byproduct of people playing Minecraft who also had innate artistry within them. And sure. do you, do you paint or you draw? I, I think you've got, uh, do you have a drawing background at all? No, no, you no, don't draw? I, I, well, I mean, I do now, but like growing up, it wasn't my thing. Like I, I had friends that I, I watched them draw in there. They're just extremely talented. You've seen people like this. Yes. They just have a natural talent yes. um, in an artistic area. Some people are amazing with color. And some people are amazing at drawing and painting. None of that. I never had any of that. It was it, It's all kind of uh, learned through the years where I, I study just a lot. You know, I follow a lot of people on YouTube and um, I've taken some drawing courses and stuff. So that I'm not naturally talented in this area. It was the same way I, I like my thing growing up was sports. So I played basketball and I wasn't naturally talented in, in basketball, but I, I worked real hard mm -hmm. and um, eventually, you know, good enough to get on the court. But um, yeah, no, I, I don't think I have a natural talent when it comes to that stuff. It was just, yeah. No, hard no, hard work's the effort. thing. I've always talked about mm -hmm. like I I made a lot like big big uh accomplishments in my life from a drumming standpoint and I would argue a natural drummer I'm the furthest thing from it. It takes a lot of work to get there, but there had to be the passion like you were saying earlier. Yep. Artistry is something that I feel like you either have something to work with or you don't have something to work with. I I go back to like well, back in high school, for example, when I, my, my girlfriend back in the day, she would come to the, my drum practices and she would just draw because she was an artist. She was doing something, B-dubs, where I was watching. I'm like, what are you doing? Her, her pencil or her pen, I remember, I think a pen, she never drew a line. It was just dots. And she was doing this for weeks, just dots. Oh, heavens. That's all it was, <laughs> dots. And when she was done, it was this image where the, the left half was a lion's face and the right half of the face was Sean Connery, but you couldn't, you couldn't discern when it changed. Like <laughs> it was the craziest thing. It was lying to Sean Connery so fluidly that it messed with your mind. Like you'd get, yeah. you, you would scan it and get to the other side and be like, when did this, when did it turn into Sean Connery? <laughs> and that was, I think probably my moment when I was like, I don't think it would matter how hard I worked at this. The yeah. talent is actually yeah. real in, in, in the form of artist artistry. So there's obviously you had something there to work with and your builds are just so aesthetically pleasing to the eye to look at. And I just, you're, you're going to have to teach me something because I can't. <laughs> that, that's, that's, that's very kind. I, I will say my dad, my dad had a fine arts degree. So he was, um, he's, he's always kind of had an artistic talent. Um, but yeah, to that level, I don't, I don't think I've, I've got that natural that natural ability. And speaking of heart, the hardest working person I know is impulse. Like that man, that That's man. That's because I works. have zero natural talent. And I have to work. <laughs> hey, 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 we're in the same boat. Yeah. yeah. We got to, we got to work to get on the floor. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. I mean, but I, I saw just looking at your, your channel's history. Like I, it seemed to me like you had a very much a big discipline for your craft. You were consistent I mean, heck, you had a hundred episodes of Building with BWO before you began your mind crack career, which is right. what I'm assuming really uh, kind of launched you into that, you know what we call fame, I guess, on, yeah. uh, on this <laughs> on this corner of of YouTube. But um, right. you know, during those first hundred episodes, was there was there ever a, a thought in your mind that that oh this is probably not going anywhere? I'm wasting my time. I should hang it up, or 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 did you always envision that you were gonna you're gonna keep going until something came of it? I, I, you know, there you get to the point to where you have like maybe a couple people that will come and watch, um, and and those people were enough. So. 
you know, I was making it for a small number of people. The thing that did, that was potentially deterring me during that time, um, my wife was not my wife at the time. We were we had just met, <laughs> like I we we had just started um, talking, and then I was making my first video around this same time, uh, and I kept it a secret from her. Because I was like, I mean, it, on, from the outside, <laughs> it, it, you see this when we try to explain it to normal people, what we do. They're mm-hmm. like, OK, yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. Oh, I would never do that. But good for you, you little baby. <laughs> yeah, that's <laughs> how it game. feels. Yeah. yeah. Um, so naturally, when you're trying to woo your future spouse, <laughs> you don't want to tell her right off the bat. Yep, I sit in my office and I play video games <laughs> for, for five people. <laughs> you know, it's not, so I, I, that was one thing in my head where I was like, man, once I get married, this is, this is over. Like, I'm, I'm going to have to tell her and then we'll, you know, shut it down. I need to be more productive and stuff like that. Luckily, I got partnered. Um, you remember the partner program? You had to have a certain amount of um, subscribers and mm-hmm. there was there were there were requirements and even still the requirements were like loose and you just had to apply and hope they would accept you then then you could make money on YouTube um so that I got approved I think I don't know how many subs maybe a thousand subs and I got approved and I told her I thought well now now there's money attached to it mm-hmm. so she's gonna like it you know uh, <laughs> and uh I told her and she loved it. Wow. And she was like, she's like, that that's so cool. And she was a hundred percent invested. She wanted to, you know, know everything about it. Now, she I don't know if she's ever seen watched one of my Minecraft videos. Um, but she was she was extremely supportive, so supportive that there came a day I was working for my dad as a general contractor, and there came a day where she was like, you know, you might be more efficient. If you spend all your time on YouTube, you know, wow. not saying, not saying quit, quit your family business, but maybe worth a consideration. And she supported me through that. I'm, I'm, I'm so um, loyal and obedient to my father that I would have never on my own even considered like this family business. It was like, I, it's my burden to carry forever. Um, but it was the, the right move to make, you know, it, so um, I guess that's the long way to poorly answer your, your question, but, um, I, I had doubts throughout that time where I was like, I don't think this is going to happen. Um, uh, but with her support, she, she's the one that's the reason why I'm still doing this today is because she kind of supported me behind it and encouraged me, um, which was a surprise. I didn't expect that, but that's, cool. um, that's amazing. I mean, yeah. considering really cool. like what's transpired since the day of that decision, to now, yep. you know, obviously, yep. I, I can't imagine you have any any regrets uh, on the way that no. things have gone, right? Yeah, absolutely. Would you, uh, in, in before that all happened, could you ever dream that that you would be part of one of the biggest SMPs? And I'm talking about Mind Crack, because mm-hmm. the way I, I saw it outside looking in, this is before I started YouTube and, and was anybody really, um, like you guys were absolute rock stars in my mind right mm-hmm. and then i i go to orlando in 2013 to a mind yeah con. yeah i buy tickets yeah, to a mind crack party uh yeah an exclusive mind crack party and i walk in the yeah. door and you were rock stars you were absolutely in 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 everyone's eyes that were in this building which was packed with people all there to see you right uh you yeah. were absolute rock stars and uh, you know, Doc and 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 Good and, and, and you all had like amazingly long lines of people that wanted your autographs. <laughs> and right. I just yeah. walked in and and I was like, wow, this is amazing. Like the these guys are like famous. They I I want that someday. You know what I mean? Like yeah. And I I got a chance to just kind of stand there and witness you kind of go through your line. And mm-hmm. it was amazing to see. We kind of saw this with Mumbo, too. We talked about uh, how Mumbo was kind of oh, like yeah. this with his line. Uh, you gave every single child, like, all the focus, all the attention you could possibly oh, do. Yeah. Uh, 
uh, uh, to the point that they shut down the building. It mm-hmm. party was over. It was like mm-hmm. two a.m. or something, and they're like, "Get out!" And you're just, mm-hmm. and you took your line out into the parking lot, if I remember right. Like you still had some yeah. people, and you're like, "Forget yeah. it. We are not. Uh, you are not leaving here until you get We're what you done. came for, which was my time." And he literally yep. took his line out into the parking lot and finished signing autographs with everybody that was there to see you. And at that point in right. time, like you were just another person. I was like, "He's the most amazing person I've ever seen." Like, oh, like, that, like I, I was so astonished by by how much you cared about the people that were there and you just like you would do the same thing like mom was doing get down on his knees to to get at their level and and really personalize the autographs get to ask them a few questions about themselves like you were giving everybody uh, a lot of your time even though your line was by far the longest and and probably because of that too right (laughs) sure yeah yeah because i was so slow yeah (laughs) but i mean that was just like i i had an immediate admiration for you even though i was already kind of a fanboy of you being there in fact i yeah i I did get you to sign my (laughs) t-shirt yes while i was there um (laughs) yeah yeah uh he's so tall i i I didn't even have to bend over much for him to sign it that's right that's right yeah let's just let's just squash (laughs) that rumor yeah yeah Yeah. (laughs) but yeah that was that was a cool experience from you know me being kind of new to the whole youtube scene uh just being able to to see you guys and and how you were drawing the crowds. I think I went to I went to your uh, panel that you did in 2013, yep. and yep. Uh, I'll never forget. And I bring this up all the time when you start busting out the two badges song. In the, yeah, uh, yeah. In the of it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> how did that song come about? I don't even remember. Uh, there was there was a video where like you remember, but Minecraft's always been buggy. You guys know this. Like we're we always mm-hmm. run into weird stuff. And there was a moment, and I don't know how it happened, but B- Badge was one of the um, creators on Minecraft, and I walked over to where he was, and we didn't have voice chat at the time, so I could say whatever I want <laughs> right right next to him, you know. Mm-hmm. And uh, he was there, but then like a clone of himself was also there. And I was just in a happy, sing-songy mood that day, you know. So I just started singing, It's two badges, they're coming to you. You know, then, <laughs> then the, just repeat it over and over. And, and somehow that became a thing. Yeah. Yeah, it's but, amazing. Yeah. Like, people still remember that today. And, uh, you know, there have been there have been a lot of people in this community that, that will remember those moments from 10 years ago. Sure, and so yeah. it, it's crazy to think that like when you started this whole thing, you could have had uh, a 14 year old watching your videos and now they're like 26, probably married with kids in a career and they're still That's, watching your videos. Mm, you know what I yeah. mean? Like <laughs> it's crazy. Yeah. I mean, you hear it all the time. I'm sure you hear it as well. Like uh, people say, I, I grew up, you know, I grew up watching you. Now I'm now I have children it's such a weird weird thing to hear from somebody mm-hmm. you know um but yeah also cool very cool experience as well God, i can't imagine either one of you would change a thing no. like it's it's funny because no. we you know we we have a lot of these conversations centered around how did you get into minecraft and how did this get started and this and that and i always like to ponder in fact impulse and i just did a podcast called what if what if Minecraft was just never invented or you were never introduced to it? It sounds like you were mm. already sort of trying to go down this this path anyways. But, I mean, if you had to venture a guess, B-dubs, what are you yeah. doing today if not Minecraft? Uh, I'm a general contractor. Oh, so you- I'm a general contractor. Not it, it was never anything I loved. I, I, I didn't love it. It was a successful business for my dad, so purely for the reasons of supporting my family and stuff, I would probably still be doing it. Maybe a heart attack, heart attack or two in. Oh, jeez, um, yeah. It's a big heart attack business. So, so, so stressful. Um, creatively, the only other thing that I did uh, was music. Um, like, in, in, during college and, um, you know, early 20s and stuff, I... I I did a lot of music stuff, played at some coffee shops and, and some other places. And, um, but you know, your talent can only take you so far. (laughs) There is that when you look at the time investment for certain things and it's like, how long will it take me to be good at this thing? 
you know, I got good enough to be able to perform, but to be really good, to go to that next level, then uh, there's not enough time in my life. You know, I might be 70 years old and then I could, you know, play with John Mayer. <laughs> um, but what, what, yeah. what'd you play? What do we do? Uh, I just play, I play guitar, just acoustic guitar mm -hmm. and, um, and, you know, sing sing yeah, and you just proved that you got a beautiful singing voice yeah he, uh, <laughs> he loves it you uh all right it's time to get there you leveraged that a little bit uh at some point in time you took a little bit of a break it seems from from minecraft i don't know if you were experiencing a little bit of burnout or whatever it happens yeah. right uh, especially yep. in the course of 12 year career and yep. you decided to shift the content you were making a little bit uh yes. you focused on being a streamer on twitch and yep. you took on a whole new persona, Bo the yep. Trucker. Uh, yep. Always had very cool trucker hats and a and yep. a oh very bushy beard. I remember. Yeah. And uh, yeah. And a cigarette non lit hanging out of your mouth uh, for the and not real by the way. Not a real cigarette. What? It was like um yeah a prop it, cigarette. It, <laughs> it, it yeah it's like a prop huh. cigarette thing yeah not even tobacco inside yeah <laughs> and then you you were playing shooter games like like PUBG yep. and and Fortnite uh but you know if you've ever played a shooter game you know that there's that like queuing system where you're you have to queue and you're sitting in the the queue waiting for all the matchmaking to happen the hundred players that they're going to throw into the map together to to all queue up and you would use that time to change your scene which you'd set up to yeah. look like you were in a truck. Uh, so you'd yep. be in the front of the truck, and then you'd change it to be in the back of the truck, and you added a reverb effect and stuff that made it sound like yep. you were actually in the bed of the truck. Ugh, and you would awesome. bust out your guitar, and you would do a little singing there. Just give me the convoy. And yeah. uh, I got to tell you, I, I, was, I was glued to the TV every really? time you would stream that uh and not because of your PUBG skills but because sure. of <laughs> yeah, of course not no <laughs> i know you were the first to admit you were you know the yes. PUBG master not very good at shooter games <laughs> but yeah the entertainment value you brought bringing it, this character to life and uh changing the the mood by getting in the back of the truck and mm -hmm. playing songs i think you had like kind of a donation system that would that would yep. kick in and that would send you to the back of the truck and you'd play a little song yep. for people. I just thought that was the most genius thing I had okay. ever seen. And I was, okay. like I said, I, I loved it. I was actually pretty sad when, when you, you stopped. Can you, yeah. how did that all come about? Like, how did you come up with that character? Yeah. How did you feel through that entire experience? Obviously there became a time where you decided to, uh, to hang up your, your, your uh, trucker hat and yep. call it a day but i'd like to kind of know yep. what was what was going through your mind through all that it's a dark story <laughs> really Ooh. you want to hear you want to hear a dark story we can uh, this podcast okay. goes all sorts of directions as yeah. you know okay um so you know doing youtube it's not purely dark it's okay there's some there's some lightness to it um the uh as youtubers your ability to provide for your family is 24 7. you can you can work from the moment you wake up to the minute you fall asleep and sometimes why fall asleep when i can keep you know trying to and, and, and even you know not even to the point of just making videos but like trying to improve your craft and and studying and yep, whatever absolutely. like it can go to a very uh it can it can infest maybe might be a good word or just your your ability to relax and and watch entertainment mm -hmm. you know um i was very consumed with it i was comfortable with it as i said my wife's always been so supportive um there i was walking upstairs and i heard her on the phone with her sister crying my wife is not very emotional i i don't know if i've seen her cry many times in our life in uh in our time together but she she was crying and she said, um, she was talking to her sister and she said, it's, I, I, it's just so difficult. And, and I was, and I, now my ears perked up and I'm like, okay, I'm going to eavesdrop now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And, uh, she was starting to really struggle with the fact that, you know, she's feeling almost like a single mom. Like she's, we got, uh, we got two little kids and, uh, She's she's the type of, of person that 
loves activity, wakes up, what are we doing today? And my daughter is also like a clone in this way, and I'm learning more about her through my children, which is funny. Um, she likes to travel. She likes to get out and do things. And as a YouTuber, it's a difficult thing for us to provide that. Even when we go, our brains aren't there. We're still here, yep. you know? Mm -hmm. um, so I had to try to think, you know, then, then I went up and talked to her and I said, you know, okay, yeah, we gotta, we gotta, let's, let's fix this then. And streaming, you know, a lot of, a lot of back and forth and ideas, but streaming was the best option because you turn it on and then you turn it off and 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 that's it like you don't there's not a whole lot more you can fiddle with some wires and be like oh maybe i'll turn my compressor up but, but regarding a stream it's less like youtube is with all the back end preparation um so i thought that would give me more normalcy as far as like a job is concerned um and and it did. It, it 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 was great for us. And and let me clarify, it wasn't. You know, she she wasn't the villain in this situation. I consider her a, a bit of a victim. You know, mm -hmm. um, to to kind of what my working habits were and stuff. Never any never any consideration of like I'm leaving him or anything like that. Just having a hard time. Um, and the streaming was was great. Like I really enjoyed it, and and it was better for us. We were to do be able to do more together and our friendship grew our marriage grew through that time um so that that's what led us to doing let led me to doing the streaming thing um now the character that i i think me i i was trying to because i thought this might come up and i was <laughs> trying to think about where that came from and i'm nearly 99% sure Generic B created it. Hmm. Um, for those of you that don't know Generic B, old old friend of mine, uh, founder of Hermitcraft. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, and then he played on Minecraft with me, and now he's kind of moved on and he's streaming all the time. But our friendship, we still message each other all, all the time. And he, the communication often... Uh, is he'll send me a message and say, "Hey, you should tr you should try this. Hey, I had a cool idea. What if you did this or that?" And I think this whole persona, I think he crafted it. Wow, it's so long ago that it's hard for me to remember exactly, but I think it was his idea. Um, that is fascinating to me. Yeah. yeah, yeah, and and you know, obviously some collaborative back and forth, but I think the initial idea came from him because i remember doing it usually he'll send me suggestions and if and if it feels out of my comfort zone i'm just like yeah 90 percent of what he says i'm just like <laughs> hey, okay yeah that's fine he just sent me something today about some mod that i should play i'm like <laughs> i'm not playing your stupid mod <laughs> <laughs> no no um no but he's he, he's got a brilliant creative mind and i think mm -hmm. that was that was a fantastic idea but i remember being a little uncomfortable with doing it initially i think even the first song that i played was uh when it was like okay go to the back of the truck this that was definitely his idea like you can incentivize uh donations by you know s singing a song or something like that and um the first time I did it, you could probably tell there's a little quiver in my voice. I was pretty nervous hmm. to do that, even though it's just me here in my in my office. Um, but yeah, yeah. Hopefully that again, long winded, but hopefully now, that gives some clarity. B Dubs, that situation. was a very honest, very vulnerable story that you just shared, and I think it's important for people to hear this because. I think that people tune into these types of podcasts for a couple different reasons. One, holy crap, B Dubs is on the show. They're gonna <laughs> they're gonna chime in and, and see what uh, what he has to say. And then sure. also, I am willing to venture that a great uh, proportion of our demographic is kind of interested in this life themselves. Not necessarily that they yeah. want to pursue it, but they, but it would be silly to entertain that they're not curious about it. That mm -hmm. they that they of course they'd like to peel back the onion and. Uh, and get a little bit more uh, to it. And what you're expressing here is that it is not like you just anybody decides to do this. And from day one, it's just smooth sailing. I mean, you actually mm -hmm. had traction. You had miles behind you. And it was still 
uh, arguably, you know, I don't want to use the word struggle, but that's sort of what it was. And, yeah. and you're right. Is You know, when you have the, your favorite people in the world depending on you, this is a hard pill to swallow. And, and we're all yes. very familiar with that. And actually, I just, this is so bizarre that we're talking about this. I just had a conversation of very heart to heart with uh, with my wife the other day that I feel like every moment because she said you can't you cannot go on like this. And because I still, as you know, mm. I still work full time at a major corporation of and course, I yeah. have extreme expenses. My my daughter is going to college over in, on the other side of the country. And that's that's a, obviously an expensive venture that I'm yeah. proud to, to do. Um, but I'm. It's it's seven days a week, as you as you know, and and I yep. it got down to I'm probably working about 14 hours a day, Monday through Friday, and then probably about six hours a day, Saturday and Sunday. And there's mm -hmm. absolutely no stopping. And she said, you cannot you cannot keep doing this. This cannot be a forever thing. And I told her, I said, I I this is a this is you, you can't stop every time that I'm right. doing something that's not directly related to content creation. I'm, I feel like I'm shortchanging my favorite people in the world, my wife, my kids. Yep. It's that, that's, mm -hmm. that's what this is. And it's, right. you know, you, you, I, it's like, and you're in a rowboat, you know, you lean forward, you grab the oars, you pull, you pull, you get yep. momentum. And in a rowboat, if you skip one pull, you can physically feel the boat slow down in that moment. And yep. that's what this world yep. is. And, and that's a great analogy. And it's yeah. brutal. It's yeah. brutal. Yep. You know, so. My question to you is, is on behalf of the people who are kind of, they could be younger kids, they could be people our age, they want to go into this world, they want to at least entertain it. What is B-Dub's advice to them as they go to try to pull the trigger and at least get started? What, what words of wisdom do you have for them um, to sort of navigate the waters of the ups and downs and the, the gut punches that we all receive? Yeah, yeah, that's that's a good question. I, I, I should also clarify too that, um, you know, we're we're talking about how hard we work. It we, it shouldn't and doesn't take away from the fact that we're loving. Hundred percent. Yeah. Hundred percent. Yeah. Yeah. We're loving it, and that's that's where you know it gets difficult because some some guilt can set in sometimes. Where it's like I'm up at three a.m. and I'm building this cathedral, that I'm like, oh my gosh, I'm having the time of my life. You know. Yeah. yeah. Um. So yeah, I I just want to I want to clarify that as well. Um. For for people coming into this, I do think one of the biggest things to consider, and not only for your relationships around you, but for your own self, um, it, it's so important to find a balance. And it's the hardest thing to do, but you have to uh, disconnect. You have to find ways to force yourself to disconnect. I did. I did. A, this is not a suggestion. Uh, but maybe an example, <laughs> when COVID hit, I bought a boat Now, don't go buy a boat. I'm not saying go buy a boat, <laughs> get a motor home. Those are more practical. No, no. But I, I, I bought that boat, uh, because it was my way to invest fully in my family, be fully disconnected. As soon as you hit the water, your brain, you're, you're there, you know? Um, but I think set, setting aside specific activities um, for yourself that will force you to disconnect, even if it takes some time, uh, forced vacations throughout my day now, I, I know when my kids come home at 327, I stop everything for two hours. Like it's just part of my routine now. And maybe that's that isn't super self edifying for me. You know, I, I'm, I'm there and I'm spending time with them and I'm present, but it's, it's very important for them, you know, that I'm, that I'm there and it, and it helps, um, keep just the whole family healthy and stuff. And e even within friendships, you know, it's important because people, you can lose all your friends like that in, in this career. Um, so I think it's the hardest thing to do because you feel you, you're like you said, the robot thing, you, you're on the way to success. Uh, I've always used uh, pushing a boulder up a hill as an example. Mm. It's a little more extreme because if you stop pushing that, you die. Yeah, um. no, that's true. It's true. It, it, yeah. It fits, yeah. Yeah. It's slightly more extreme, but um, it is it is the the one of the toughest battles mentally. And, and you can see mature 
people in this industry, people that have done it for a long time, they they figure that balance out. The people that don't figure it out, they're gone. Yeah. Yeah. No, I th- this is that's very sage advice. And this yeah. is something that I, I almost want to touch on because I I feel myself in uh, getting to those moments and saying, no, 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 I cannot do this anymore. I was doing this thing. I told Impulse yep. about this where last summer um, my, I have a pool and my wife, she loves to go swimming and I love being in the pool with her and spending time with her. And there was a, she's like, Hey, I have this time and let's, you know, let's do the pool or whatever. And I was either going to do a, which was go in the pool or I was going to do B, which is going to be get back to work because there was a a project and, or or I could have streamed. That's what I could have streamed. And my brain Mm. started to do the math in regards to (laughs) like, this is what it would cost me to go in the pool. And in (laughs) that moment I was like, I got that's, I have to get myself in check right now. And so, because that's a, that's a dark, that's a dark, path right there so i'm like i'm not going to be that guy you know what we're going swimming and so yep to that end you bring up the fact that we enjoy it and we love it there's no question but right it can be argued that the fact that we love it is almost why i personally end up feeling more guilt because i'm like yes let me go ahead and put my favorite people in the world at risk so i can do something that i love that's yeah like how how self-centered is that and i actually for the record i don't think it is but it feels like it is Mm -hmm. when i see other creators do this i admire them when i do it i feel guilt like it's bizarre it's like this this balance i can't quite quite manage but it is a certain it is the for lack of a better phrase it is the dark side of this uh this this lifestyle yeah you know absolutely Yeah. yeah And I, I think, I think there's that. also a part to like going back to the rowing a boat, right? Like if you if you skip a row or two and you feel the boat slow down, you know it's going to mm. take that much more effort to get it going again. Yeah, yeah. And True. I think there's also yeah. a concern that well, I, I I now that I'm not just like flowing anymore, and I, I have to put more momentum. pressure under this 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 oar, it's going to snap yeah. and happen. It's and I'm done. I'm cooked. Right. This is the end yep. of my career. And so there's yep. that constant pressure that like what what we've built now that we are absolutely loving doing could mm-hmm. could go away, right? Yeah. Now you've been around 12 years doing this. You've mm-hmm. been through so many different things. Uh, you know, we talked about your time uh, as you started with with your building with BWO, which is still going to this day. We talked about you being on Mindcrack. Mindcrack mm-hmm. also had a lifespan. You know, it's it's still it going, did. but yeah. it had its peak as most things mm-hmm. do. And, yep. and then there was that time uh, where, you know, you, you started doing the streaming thing and then Hermitcraft came along. So obviously you've experienced the peaks and valleys of yeah. a content creator's career. Tell yep. me about, tell me about the times when you were in a valley and, and the how, valleys. and, and how that affected you. Because those, those are the times that I feel like anybody that's aspiring to be a content creator needs to kind of figure out how to deal with because mm-hmm. that's the most scary thing yeah. about being a content yeah. creator is when you know you get to that point where things are good and you're happy and you're constantly stressed that there's gonna that that's gonna change and that valley's right. gonna come. You've experienced that valley and you've come yeah. back multiple yeah. times from what I can from yeah. what I can tell in your career. So tell us about what was going through your head as as numbers started to drop and and mm. then all of a sudden you're back you're back on top and then you know it, it changes again. Like that's just that's the ebbs and flows of being a content creator. Yeah. Yeah. It's there's, there's zero security really. Well, I shouldn't say zero, but there, there is like hardly any security, which kind of, you know, there's that it fear inside us. That's, Mm -hmm. that's kind of a driver as well. Um, but yeah, I've gone through, I've gone through some of those times where there wasn't, you know, anything coming in from YouTube or, you know, the numbers drop, I remember doing the math one day and I was like, I could, I could, uh, I could go to McDonald's and I could work there and and make more, you know? Mm. Um, and you know, that wasn't, it, it, it doesn't feel like it was that long ago. <laughs> uh, so it, it, it can all change, um, very fast. And I think going through those valley, those valleys has, uh, instilled a little bit of confidence knowing that, you know, you it's not just up and down only you can you can go you know back and forth a little bit almost like it's breathing Mm -hmm. Mm. um but yeah the 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 valley times were tough they're tough 
I, I won't I won't say that they weren't. They were they were very tough because um in it, it, a lot of times it came with uh, algorithm changes, <laughs> you know, <laughs> back in the day, it was like the number of subscribers you have determined if, if you get a million subscribers, you're set for life because, you know, that's what drives people to your channel. Uh, not and then that stopped. And then it, it was like, what what's happening? You know, I think the algorithms changed for the better, to, to be fair. But um you know, it was a period of trying to understand that and fighting against it and feel like the algorithm's an enemy and stuff like that. So I hate, there were, there's, I think even a video where I was like, I just hated YouTube, what YouTube was doing and all that stuff. Mm -hmm. Um, so yeah, frust, very, just very frustrated. Um, but it turned, it turns around like during those Valley times, I'm mad and I'm, I'm a victim. But things turn around when um, I start to think, okay, how, how do I work with whatever this problem is that I, that I have, you know? Because um, it's so easy, you know, it's like, it's like a rock comes and it hits you in the head and you just say, well, I'm dead. I have no reason to live anymore, <laughs> you know? It's like, <laughs> it's like we get peltered with things um, in YouTube and, and, uh, sometimes it takes that valley for you to start thinking. So I did a lot of reading, actually. I did a lot of reading, mm. you know, just uh, self. <laughs> I got I got suckered into some self help books <laughs> um, that that were actually kind of eye opening for you know helping you stay positive and and teaching you to think, you know, think your way through things. Um, where I kind of just brute forced, you know, my way through a lot of stuff back in the day. Um, so yeah, just more more self reflection during those those valley times. Um, there there was you know, um, it's up to you guys whether you want to include this or not. But um, there was a you know a, there was a time that I took off where, well, my wife was pregnant with our third daughter, and we found out after about six months that she had um, trisomy 13, which is, it, it's just, it's a chromosomal disorder that causes deformities throughout the body. And uh, so, you know, we, the, and, and that's why, uh, you know, I was, I was streaming a lot, but then stopped uh, because of this. It was just mentally so, so difficult for me. Um, she was, she was six months pregnant. I, I believe it was about six months or five months. Whenever they do those first initial ultrasounds, we we they did the ultrasound. We came home. We did the um, the gender reveal. Little you know, cut the cake and see what's inside. Find out it's a girl. And I'm like, oh no, another girl. You know? <laughs> Number three. And, and um, then they called us like a, a week later and said, we want to talk to you about some more stuff. So they did some more you know ultrasounds and stuff, and they found that. Basically, she, she's not going to survive. Um, the the likelihood, and and if she it, it you know if she does survive um, the labor process, her her life's going to be extremely extremely short. Um, the, the most difficult thing in my life. Now, this is beyond YouTube valleys. This was life valley. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know, uh, so content creation was. <laughs> Forget it. Like I could, there's no way, you know, um, it was, it was a very, very difficult time, uh, for us, a lot of, you know, just pleading with God and, and, and just anything to, to like holding on to any hope that this is, we had a name for her, you know, this was, this was my girl. And, um, even though, and, and this is a, a tough thing to pe for people to relate to, especially if you don't have kids, but as soon as you know there's a bun in the oven, that's your child, you know? And uh, that's at least how, how it is for me, I should mm -hmm. say. Uh, and so it was, it was such a difficult time. Um, my friend Jay Wolves at my door, mm -hmm. who did the Life merch, 
Uh, he also streams and he did, uh, he, he, he knew that I wasn't going to be able to do anything during this time. And they, I believe it was a GoFundMe and they, they raised some money to just help support me through that time. Um, and, and that, that helped a lot. So that's, that's how I got through that valley is that he kind of, he kind of, you know, carried me through, through it financially, which, which was really, really kind. Um, but yeah, yeah. Uh, it, it, it was a very difficult time. I mean, and, and I guess to finish the story, she was, um, she, my wife did give birth to her. Um, I held her, we both held her and, uh, she was with, <laughs> she was with us for, um, 18 hours and then, and then passed. Wow. Um, that's a tough one. That's as, yes, tough, as, yeah. that's, as tough as it gets. Yeah, that's as tough as yeah, it gets. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, um, you know, there's, there's, there obviously people take other approaches to things. But for me, it was like, if, if, you know, with my own kids, any chance I can get them to survive, I'll do it. Mm -hmm. And uh, so it was the same mentality. It was just thinking, you know, if we can, if we can do anything, even if it's just like for the brief moment that she's here, show her love. And we did. Um, but yeah, that was, that was a very difficult time. And, um, you learn a lot about life when you go through traumatic moments like that, you know, and you learn a lot about yourself. Um, and I really, during that time, I thought I'm done, like I'm done, done. I'm, I, I'm not going to have the joy and the energy in my life to be able to create content like I used to ever again, you know? Mm -hmm. Um, but I came to a point where I thought, I thought, I don't want the memory of my daughter to to publicly be, that's the reason why he doesn't create content anymore. Why he doesn't, you know, you, you guys get these comments all the time where you bring so much joy to my life. And this is, I look forward to this every day and stuff like that. Um, and I, I thought, I want to do the opposite. I want to, I, I, I want... Um, I want to continue bringing joy to people's life and do it in her honor and in her memory, you know? Um, so that, that was when I, when I kind of came to that realization, I was like, yeah, yeah, I, I, I'm going to do this. And, and there, there might be some tough times. And I think that there was a hermit craft season six video where I, I struggled my way through it, uh, kind of t telling the story. Mm. Um, but yeah, that that's that's kind of been my motivation to this point is through her memory, bring joy to people's lives as best I can. Um, so yeah, cut out the crying part. Okay. <laughs> very, I can't, that's what very, I was gonna say. Very, very no, 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 no. I wanted. Well, you said that it's up to us if we want to keep it in. Let me be very clear. Yeah. It's up to you. Yeah. And, and I and I want you to take a take a moment uh, to kind of digest that because there is. I mean that that was the uh, pinnacle of being vulnerable, and it's yeah. it, it's it's uh, it's super admirable that you would even entertain sharing something um, that deep within you. And I I I already had you on a pretty decent pedestal, but it's it's gone up higher. So take 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 some time to to let that uh, no, marinate. I would. I, I it's totally up to you guys. If it was up to me, I'd say I'd say leave it in a hundred percent. Okay, because I, 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 it's it's part of my 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 story. You oh, know, hundred so percent. It's, That's it's a you nailed it. Yeah, this is your story, right? Yeah. So we we asked about peaks and valleys, and and I'll admit I was in the numbers games of peaks and valleys, but <laughs> he sure. brought the valleys into like sometimes life. We haven't we've touched on this in before, but not to this degree. And there are sometimes life events that come by and they just cripple you. Yeah. And, and, yeah. and we, and, and there's, it's hard to navigate those waters. And in this world, well, you know what? Suck it up. B dubs, put on a happy face and get out there and do yep. your job. It doesn't, doesn't work, work like that. that. Yeah. It no. doesn't work like that. And so, I mean, me personally, I feel, um, I feel, I feel pretty damn honored that you, that you shared that with us, man. And that's, that is, a, yeah. that's a side of B dubs that, um, I, I hadn't really seen before. And that's, that's yeah. very, very, very painful, man. Yeah, that's, that's tough yeah. stuff. Jeez, oh Pete. And I know, uh, speaking, <sighs> you know, not only for myself but for for your your viewers and fans everywhere, I, I think we were all very happy to see you were able to, you know, find joy again 
in yeah. coming back and creating content and yeah. you know hearing hearing you laugh and making us laugh uh after knowing you know what you'd gone through because you did share uh ivy's yeah. story right so yeah. uh you know i know that was that was uh, obviously a, a tough part of 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 your history and yeah. and the fact that you were able to um you know kind of see the light again you know like see see joy in the world again after going through something like that is, is something that that is just um uh, very inspiring you know to to, mm-hmm. to hear that story and, and to, to see you know what you've what you've brought back to the world you know after after coming out of something like that it's just yeah, uh, it's it, just it's challenging well, it's it, a it's, testament to the resilience that resilience has, right exactly, and that's yeah. Yeah, there's been a couple of different times we've talked about it of, of something going south or going bad or whatever. And both times what you did was you demonstrated that necessity does breed innovation. And the first one was yeah. the eavesdropping that that's, yep. that's going to be a very painful moment. And that resulted in a very deliberate effort to turn things around and, and write the ship and, and try something yeah. new. And, and that's, uh, these are lessons learned. These are lessons that everybody needs because, you know, I've said it before life has this tendency of, ready or not here i come man you can't oh, yeah. you don't get to <laughs> pick and choose when yeah. tragedy's gonna gonna hit you you sometimes you don't get to pick and choose when the good times are gonna hit that just it just exactly. comes at you and you have to uh uh have the stabilization to to navigate it yeah. to the best of your ability so take um, it yeah. as it comes it, right yeah you know it, the good exactly. and the bad. yeah yeah and i think um i think in, in traumatic moments you have you have choices to make. Everybody has a choice to make of, uh, of how you plan on coming out of it, you know? Um, and, and sometimes it's, it's obviously it can be very, very difficult. Um, but you know, you want, hopefully you want to do the right, the right thing, you know, the right thing for others and, and for yourself. Um, and, and I think this is like, this is another thing. I've always been kind of open about this stuff, but I, I don't think every creator is. And that gets lost on the viewer very often is that, you know, if you notice something slightly off about your, your creator or something, or even if you there's not and you're just coming after them, there's, they're real people, you yeah, know, yeah. And, and their life isn't just what you're seeing on the camera. There's real stuff going on behind the scenes. Yep, yep. Um, everybody's going through something right yes it, yeah. it, and it could be as heavy as is what you just told us about or it could be uh, just woke up on the wrong side of the bed kind of you know thing mm-hmm. but yeah. at the end of the day you know that's that's We're what people. you have to acknowledge We're people. Is, yeah like, like yeah we all got stuff going on and sometimes especially in the content creation world uh if something's going on that's that's a bit heavy at least even if it's in your own mind and not truly heavy um then yeah. it can cause you to behave or or not put your best foot forward and not be as uh bubbly or or you know what i mean like give that vibe right. off that people come to your content for right like like right. people people consume content to escape and they don't want to escape to a, a world that's not a happier place you know what i absolutely. mean absolutely so yes. to, to take the time that you needed to uh get get back in the right headspace to be able to to do that to make content yeah. again that you knew that, that people were going to be into, I think was absolutely the the best thing you could have done, even though it was, yeah. it was probably pretty stressful um, financially or whatever. None of that stuff matters, right? Like no. it's, it's, it's life that matters and how we deal with it. And, and absolutely. so to me, I, I think that that's, that's admirable uh, to, yeah. to do what you did, take a step back that you needed, take the time you needed. Well, and I should add to this too that that what pulled me out of the valley was you guys was was hermitcraft because you know I I I felt like okay I want to try doing this you know and I I started doing building with BWO single player content uh, for a while and then um, I came to the group and I said you know I, I played in season five but then a lot had changed since then. Mm-hmm. And it'd been a long time. It had been several years. We, you were like midway season six. And I, I had just asked if I could join again um, because my friends are there and success. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> let's, not be stu- let's not be silly. You guys are blowing up, doing unbelievable. I want to play with my friends, but also it's a good thing. It's a, you know, you guys are doing amazing good stuff and I'd love to be a part of that. Um, and, 
it didn't seem like there was hardly any any hesitation at all and that's something i'm extremely grateful for is is the group of people in hermit craft we at all so, we were so excited to have you back man like yeah like it, it was so great um i i was still fanboying when we recorded the clip of you falling from the sky i remember in front i of remember me. that moment yeah uh <laughs> i remember because like i think that was the first time that we had actually like done a full-blown collaboration together was that yep. specific clip and yes. we recorded the clip the clip took maybe 60 seconds to record but then we spent yeah. like another 20 minutes just standing in the in the middle of the the sidewalk in the game just chatting and yep we immediately I, I don't know I felt like an immediate connection to you to where I felt like this is a, a person super easy to talk to we have yeah. a lot in common and I was like yep b-dubs we need to do more together <laughs> yeah <laughs> we need to do more together and um we we did we did some some great things especially in in season seven I think this is probably the best point in time to uh wrap up this Part one. Part of, one. Yeah. I know. Cliffhanger. I know our it viewers, is. they don't love it when we uh, <laughs> make them come back the next week. It. But here's the thing. Usually when we have guests that we do two parts with, we usually like have, okay, part one's all about content creation yeah. and the Minecraft world and, and the videos. Whoops. And then part two is about more of your personal life. And you've told, us, you've told us a lot about your personal life. And this, in fact, it's been a very nice, healthy mix of both. Yeah. So part two is probably going to be more of that is what I'm thinking. Yeah, I think <laughs> because so. we got so much more also, to cover. Yeah. In, in part two, I can I can um, tell them a little bit about my OnlyFans. Perfect. <laughs> Perfect. It's those feet pick. I'm telling you. That's the, yeah, that, baby. You get rich. That's the real money. Expose them feet. Uh, <laughs> That's right. <laughs> anyway. All right, dude. We'll give you a little bit of a break and, uh, okay. and we'll come back and, and we'll record another another section of this podcast in part two and, and everybody can see again next week. Perfect. That sounds right. amazing. Thanks for joining Thank us, man. You guys. See you in a bit.